Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we're looking at a gun that I have been trying to get my hands on for for a couple years. The Beretta APX pistol. Now this pistol here, uh, for some reason, uh, I was having a difficult time with Beretta getting anybody to uh, send me one for test and evaluation. So my good buddy Brandon over at the uh, gun room in Shenandoah decided to get one and loan it to me. So I'm very, very grateful for Brandon for doing that. Now the pistol that we have here is a Breda APX Combat. Uh, what Combat basically means is we have a threaded barrel, uh, except a sound suppressor. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the history of where this pistol comes from. This pistol is Beretta's first striker-fired pistol, and it was designed for a specific purpose. The specific purpose was the XM17 program. This was what Breda was going to be submitting, or what Breda did submit, as their solution to the XM17 pistol. Now, unfortunately for Beretta, this was not one of the ones that was uh, chosen towards the end. As you all know, the uh, final two pistols that were selected for the down select were the Glock and the SIG, and the SIG P320 being uh, coming the ultimate winner. Now, this pistol here was very well built, uh, very nicely made. It's what you would expect out of Beretta. We're going to jump right into this uh, and go over some of the specifications from it. Um, the pistol, of course, is 9x19 caliber, barrel length of 4.9 inches. Now, the threads on this one are 1.5x28, so it will take any common sound suppressor. Overall length is 8.5 inches with an overall width of 1.5 inches. Sight radius is 6.1 inches with the weight being 33.3 .3 ounces. Now the magazines, 17 rounds, uh, steel magazines. Now striker fire, as we mentioned, uh, there's pretty much a idea was that the U.S. government was looking for a striker fired pistol. Uh, that was what they were looking for, so that's what they were provided. Now you have uh, the front and rear sights on here. These are both removable. So you would be able to put on a night sight or wherever sight that you would want to. This also is optics ready. You have a removable top plate where you can you have uh, plates for uh, the Burris, the Trichicon, Leopold, and the uh, and the Seymour sights. So you can place those right on there as well. Now you have a dual recoil spring. The finish on here is an interesting finish because it's the Bruntine finish. This is the same fish they've been putting on the Berettas for many, many, many years. It's a strong, durable, military type finish. Now, we're going to start getting into the inside. We're going to see a little bit more. But uh, the mag catch, as you can see here, is reversible, so it's fully ambidextrous. And that was a very important part of the XM17 program was fully ambidextrous. So you have reversible magazine release. You have a reversible slide stop. And you also have a trigger that's, that's uh, got a trigger safety. You have the same kind of a little tit in the middle like the Glock has, which prevents it from being pulled unless the trigger is pulled all the way to the rear, just engaging that safety. Now, there are safeties there were within this pistol as well. You have the striker deactivation button, which we're going to be showing you when we take it apart. You have a trigger safety, a firing pin block safety, and an out-of-battery safety. Now, out-of-battery safeties are very similar to uh, what most modern-day pistols have. If the barrel is just slightly out of the unlocked position, when you pull the trigger, you're not going to be able to release the striker. The slide has to be fully in battery for you to be able to get it to fire. Firing pin block, we'll take a, we'll take a look at when we take it apart. Now, something else you will notice on here, you have very little muzzle flip on this pistol due to the fact that you have a very low bore axis. This is not as low as some of the other ones. I think the Glock, I feel the Glock has a probably a lower uh, bore axis than this one does. But uh, it is lower than most, so you do get a little bit uh, less recoil. Uh, production of this pistol began in 2016, and it was uh, announced for commercial sales in February of 2017. Now, this is a black in color, which is what I prefer. I'm not much into the flat dark earth or the colored pistols. You can get black, flat dark earth, olive drab, as well as a wolf gray. Uh, and also there's a two different frames as well. You can get one with the finger grooves like you see here and one without the finger grooves. You also have a removable back strap where you have a small, medium, and large. Uh, very easy to install on there. Now, I usually change these up because I have relatively big hands, but uh, the one that it comes with uh, fit me very, very, very well. So then what we're going to do now is we're going to get into the inside because there's some very interesting aspects of this pistol. First off is one of the things people despised about Glocks was the fact that you have to pull the trigger to disassemble it. Beretta has designed this so you do not have to do that. So what you're going to do is you're going to just get the pistol out of battery just a little bit. You're going to take a bullet tip or a drift punch, and you have a disengagement button right here for the striker. So you're going to push that in until you hear that click. Then we're going to push in the disassembling latch release button. We're going to decrease the lever. And now we can just slide that right off. Now, of course, you can pull the trigger to disconnect it, but uh, why would you want to do that when you don't have to, when you have that button on there? It's a really, really neat addition that they have to this pistol. Now, we remove the recoil spring. We have dual recoil springs. Uh, due to this being a military pistol, 
Uh, we're going to see when we do some firing. This pistol was designed to fire M882 ball ammunition or NATO ammunition, which is plus P ammunition. So you're utilizing a relatively heavy recoil spring and a heavy slide. Now to remove the barrel on this one, because it's, just, it's, got, it's set up for a sound suppressor, we have to remove the thread protect, pull the barrel right out. And again, we have a 4.9 inch barrel. And here we have the slide. Now looking in the inside of the slide, now looking in the slide, you can see the firing pin safety. And again, what you would always expect from Beretta, you just had the smoothest machining, very, 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 very well made. We also, as you can see, we have slide serrations on the front and the rear, which is a feature that I do like, uh, where some people, they do and they don't like it. Um, the front, people like to do it for press checks, uh, which are part of some some units have training where, where they test that after they load the pistol, they don't trust that it loads by itself, they don't they want to check it. But you do have uh, slide serrations on the, both the front and the rear. Now when we look at the, the pistol frame, we have a polymer frame. Now we have a removable chassis, just like we have on the uh, MP, the P P320 in uh, the Masada and some of the other pistols. Now I'm not going to be removing this one because uh, for this one there's one additional thing that you have to do. You have to remove this spring on here and uh, I don't have a, a tool here uh, with our claw to disengage that. So I'm not going to be showing you how to do that. So your basic removal process for that chassis is going to be removing this assembly latch lever. And then what you would do is when you would put, you would remove that locking clip, this would slide out and this whole chassis would come right out. So for reinstallation, relatively simple. Very similar to that of any of the SIG pistols. Now we can see our ejector. We can also see, uh, our pulls back on the striker. Now your serial number. You can see from the notch cut in the frame, you can see the serial number, which is part of the chassis. Reassemble the slide, drop the barrel back in place. You can put your thread protector right back on. It's always a good idea to have that on there to protect those threads in case the pistol's dropped. Doesn't take too much of a burr to make it so you can install your suppressor. Insert your recoil spring. All the way to the rear. Now we're at it. Now, as we previously stated, a 17-shot magazine. Now, the suppressor that I'm using on here is the Ackley's Defense Pillum. Uh, this is an excellent suppressor. This is Ackley's Defense's Joe Mo from uh, Former Sons of Guns. Uh, he has his own shop now, Ackley's Defense, and he does a lot of work with suppressors. Uh, and this is the model Pillum for 9mm. Now, the So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to go to range and we're going to see how this sucker shoots. Now the range was very revealing about this pistol. Now first off, we used four different kinds of ammunition. Uh, the first one was the Federal 9mm 147-grain Syntec, uh, which is a synthetic projectile. Federal 9mm 147-grain Subsonic uh, TMJ, which is made by American Eagle, Federal American Eagle. Black Hills Ammunition 115-grain Full Metal Jacket. And Winchester 9x19 NATO, 124-grain NATO plus P. Now, where this got really interesting was with the subsonic ammunition, both the Federal Syntec and the TMJ, if you did not have the sound suppressor on there, this sucker, this sucker would uh, malfunction. You would have uh, short stroking with it. Then when you would take the Black Hills 115 grain full metal jacket and fire that through it without the suppressor on it, you would uh, it would be reliable, but you would notice that the cartridge cases just barely make it out of the pistol. Then when you put the Winchester 9x19, which is basically the M882 ball plus P, the pistol worked beautifully, locked back to the rear, everything, no problem. So when we put the suppressor on with the Federal 147 grain Syntec, we noticed that uh, we had uh, reliable cycling. However, the cartridge case just popped out and it didn't lock open after the last shot. 
We know it's the same thing with the federal 9mm 147 grain American Eagle TMJ, where the American Eagle just flopped out, didn't really have any kind of a strong ejection pattern. The 9mm 115 grain full metal jacket, we did have full cycling and we had erratic uh, locking back on the last shot. However, with the Winchester M882 Baller, the 9mm NATO, this pistol worked properly. No problems whatsoever, uh, suppressed or unsuppressed. When we fired the, the M882 Baller Winchester uh, NATO ammunition was unsuppressed, we had no issues whatsoever, as you can see from the video, that uh, locked back on the last shot and you had strong ejection. The pistol worked relatively well. What does that tell us? That tells us that this pistol was manufactured for NATO high-pressure ammunition exactly what it was designed for, the XM-17 program. What most manufacturers will do, in fact, uh, SIG did this with the P320. When you manufacture a pistol for the military, you have it balanced with your weight of your slide and your recoil spring, that it will cycle, re cycle reliably and strong with the plus P military ammunition. Now, when you introduce that same pistol for commercial use, knowing the fact that we have a wide variety of ammunition from 95 grains up to 147 grains, what ends up having to happen is you have to decrease the weight of the slide and you reduce the load on the recoil spring so it will cycle reliably with everything that you put in it. Now, SIG did that with, the, with their pistol. Now, the P320 M17 is slightly different from the M17 commemorative, which is the actual military pistol. And you can see when you look at the slide, we have a video on this on uh, the P320 M17. When you look at the underbelly of the slides, you will see that where there's clearly material machined out of the P320 M17 slide. And you'll see there's a lighter recoil spring. You can feel it when you pull it back compared to the standard M17. Those were modifications that were made so the P320 M17 would work with all commercial, commercial ammunition. Where the standard M17, it will work with some, but... You will have you can have short stroking with lighter powered ammunition. It's it's not as uh, conducive to the different types of ammunition. Beretta, when they released this pistol, they did not modify it from what I can see from their military configuration. It's still designed for the heavy pressure ammunition. Now, when you put the uh, sound suppressor on there with the sub, with the supersonic ammunition, pistol works just fine. It locks back on reliably, good strong ejection. But when you take that suppressor off and you use anything other than from what I've tested here other than the 9mm NATO ammunition, you can have failures to uh, failures to feed, you can have failures to lock back. Those failures are very evident. And the ammunition that I'm using here, this is normal ammunition. Black Hills 115, uh, you know, the Federal 147s. I use uh, 147s in both the uh, the carbines as well as the, uh, the pistols, and I've never had really an even issue. So the problem that I saw here was relatively unique uh, to the APX for as far as what ammunition it does like. Now, for as far as the weak ejection pattern, some people that wouldn't be a problem, uh, you know. But for me, I want to have a little bit stronger ejection pattern because that way I know when I start getting in cold weather and everything, I know everything's going to work. Uh, I know if I was to have, if I was to buy this pistol, that uh, the primary ammunition I would use would be plus P in it, uh, just to, to make it work reliably, lock back reliably. Uh, this is not necessarily a fault of the pistol; it's the fault of Beretta for not modifying it for use with commercial ammunition. Uh, so those are some very interesting things that we saw. You know, uh, again, I just want to recap that again. With a suppressor, the 147 grain Syntac would not lock open at all. The 147 grain full metal jacket, it was intermediate. It would lock open. Uh, with the suppressor, the 124 and the 115 uh, locked back and everything reliably. It was really the unsuppressed where the problems really existed uh, with pretty much everything but the Winchester, uh, in my opinion. So that's what appears to be the issue uh, with the pistols concerned. So overall, the accuracy was uh, was excellent, which you expect from any kind of a combat pistol. Uh, the feel of the pistol is very, very nice. You know, the market is literally flooded right now with striker-fired pistol. Everybody and their brother has one, uh, regardless of what the manufacturers are. So to really, really make something that's very, very unique, uh, that's going to displace, you know, the you know the mainstream Glock or whatever, is this, play, is this pistol going to replace the Glock? No, uh, I don't think so at all. It does have a really unique feature on here, though. I really do like that disconnect so you don't have to uh, dry fire the pistol to remove the slide. That was really, really uh, a unique feature. It does have an excellent feel to it. Uh, definitely, if you were to uh, lighten up the slide and the recoil spring so it would be more conducive to work with the lighter ammunition, it would be an excellent pistol. So it's definitely a good option. So... Uh, you know, again, I want to thank Brandon from the gun, the gun Room in Shenandoah for providing me with this pistol because, as I said, I've been trying to get him from Redder for a couple of years. 
very nice, that is a very nice pistol. You don't know want ammunition to use in it. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.